Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Cloud Learner Pro. In this session, today we are going to talk about domain naming system, DNS. First, what is DNS? To make you understand what is DNS, I'll give a simple example and then I'll give you a diagrammatical explanation to make you more understanding. To give a simple example and make you understand what is DNS, I'll try to open command prompt in my local machine and I'll, I'll run a command here, which is ping space google.com. Here you can see google.com is running in one of the server and the server IP address is 142.250.71.46. Likewise, if I run one more command, which is nslookup space google.com, I might get the same IP address or I might get a different IP address. Why? Because every request will go to any one of the server on which the google.com is running. Let me try to run nslookup space google.com. Here you can see google.com. It's, oh my God. Uh, it didn't give any response. Let me try to ping it and let's look up again. Okay. And let's look up space google.com. See here, I'm getting 142.250.71.46. So which is the same IP address, which we get when we try to ping the google.com website. So this means when you're trying to reach a website, that means you're actually trying to connect a server. Whereas a website is having a domain name and that domain name is part of a mission and a mission is having an IP address. Eventually, that means this website domain name is mapped to an IP address in the domain naming server. So that's why the domain naming server will resolve a host name into IP address and an IP address into host name. So this is the functionality of a domain naming server. If I want to give a simple definition of DNS, DNS is a database or a directory which will contain domain names and IP address of all missions across the world. Basically, domain naming server works on divide and win, whereas it will divide the domain names and makes easy to identify the domain names. So like we have different, different alphabetical domain naming servers, which are called root servers and are placed in different, different locations and managed by different companies across the world. Among them, there are some servers which are called as top domain servers, according to this domain names, which have been choosed and which have been used across the world. Like .gov, government websites, .mil, military websites, .com, you might have seen so many .com websites, .edu, education websites, .net, .int, and .org. So these are top seven domain level companies, sorry, top seven domain level servers, which are being currently managed by different companies across the world. If I tell what is domain and what is IP address, domain is nothing but a name or a string of a particular website. IP address is an internet protocol address, which is used for computer missions to communicate with each other. Yep. Let me give you a clear example to make you understand how the DNS works. Here, I'm trying to access one URL from my browser. Let's assume that URL as google.com to make you more understanding or to, to make it more simple, let's take google.com as a website which we want to access from my browser. So when I'm trying to access google.com, if I know the IP address, if my mission knows the IP address of google.com, it will definitely connect to this google.com and it will launch the web page for me. So if my mission is not having the details of google.com IP address, it will go and check in the cache, whereas the cache information will be stored for some period of time. So it will first go and check here whether it is having the IP address of google.com. In case, if this cache is not having the information, it will try to contact the DNS server. In the DNS server, it will check whether the DNS server is having IP address of google.com. If yes, then it will launch the 
session file. If no, it will try to connect to the root server to get the IP address of google.com. If root server is also not having what root server does, it gives me a information of top level domain servers. Hey, DNS server, you can go and check here in the top level domain server. If still I'm not able to find the google.com IP address, top level domain server says, hey, I don't have IP address of google.com. Can you go and check in authoritative server, which is the DNS server we can call like global DNS server in which we'll have all the DNS entries. Whereas once the DNS server tries to reach authoritative server, it will give you the information of google.com. Like say if the google.com IP address is something like this. Okay, this is a google.com IP address. In return, the authoritative server will give the google.com IP address to the DNS server and to our browser. Now, the browser will directly launch a connection with google.com website and in return, we will get the website page launched in our web browser. So this is the whole process of DNS how the DNS will resolve the IP address and how the DNS will connect to root server, DLD server, authoritative server, and will fetch the information of a website and will give the website in our browser. To give you one more example here, we have or we are very well aware of google.com. Like in place of google.com, let me try to place a website name which is not yet created, for example, it's a cloudlearner.com. So this is a website name, which I'm going to access in my browser. Let me try to paste it here and hit on enter. If this website is not yet created, or if this website is not yet uh, available, that means we will not be able to reach that website, right? So what it does, basically it will try to, this browser, my browser will try to check in the local cache for the cloud learner IP address, then it will go to DNS, it will check for the IP address. If, if it is not available, it will go to root servers. And if root server is also not having the information of cloud learner IP address, it will try to tell, hey, you reach the TLD server. If TLD server is also not having information, then the DNS server will get the information about authoritative name server. It will go and check here. Even if it is not available, we'll get the response like this. It says, error timeout so no one is able to tell what is the IP address of cloudlearner.com because this website is not there that's the reason none of these root servers are also having the information of cloudlearner.com yeah so since because these root servers are not having the information of the cloudlearner.com we are not able to access this website here yeah this is all about the DNS and how the DNS resolves an IP address to host name and host name to IP address. So I hope this video is informative. Thank you.